Do you have any um, advice or tips at all on how to maintain that focus when you study and like how to keep that motivation like you know how, yeah. how to not like the thing is with me like I have it on one day and then I don't on the other and then that's like a waste of a day how, how do I yeah yeah so two different topics focus and motivation are two different topics okay so you're aware of the topic of classical conditioning Pavlovian no. conditioning have you heard of that oh yes yes I am yeah yeah so Sorry. Pavlov's dogs so I'll just explain for anyone that's um who watches this later is not familiar. So Pavlov was a scientist. He had these dogs. Every time he fed these dogs, he'd ring this bell. And eventually the dogs would start salivating when, whenever they heard the bell, even if there wasn't food. And so this is classical conditioning or Pavlovian conditioning in which is a very primitive reflex sort of that can be created. This is such a powerful response that we can't really overcome it just like with willpower alone. And so that, that becomes a really good hack for us to use because it means that we can classically condition ourselves. And then even if we want to break out of it, we're not able to. In the negative sense, there are certain things that will become bad triggers for certain behaviors that just are uncontrollable. Focus is made up of three parts. One is conditioning ourselves to enter into states of focus enough times that the activity associated, you know, the ritual or routine delivers the focus straight away. It's mm -hmm. conditioned to have a focus response. So that's one part. And that makes it much more sustainable and much easier and much more effortless over time. But that's sort of medium to long-term. The second thing that we do is we're creating focus zones. And focus zones are both mental and physical. And that means going to the extremes to remove distractions. If MRI, functional MRI studies, looking at the response of the brain under specific different distractions, show that people with high discipline and willpower do not respond significantly differently to distractions than people that typically have low willpower or self-control. So that means that everyone has roughly the same amount of distractibleness. And apps like Facebook and games and phones, they're like designed to hack into your brain to like distract you. They're, they're a super normal stimulus of distraction. We, we have not evolved enough to overcome that. Um, so we're always going to lose if we're trying to use motivation and willpower to avoid distractions. So we need to identify all those distractions and just remove them from our physical zone. Something like a distractions cheat list is really good. See what's distracting you. Every time you get distracted, write it down. And then the next session, see if you can remove that source of distraction so that every time you enter into this focus zone, you are less and less distracted by things. And that's necessary because until you have that classical conditioning kick in, you're going to need all yeah. the help that you can get. The other transition is the mental transition of entering into flow state. And what I really recommend for this is what I call tag on, tag off mindfulness. So before you enter into a study situation or a time where you need to focus, do like one or two minutes of mindfulness meditation where you're just focusing in and then start studying. And then whenever you finish studying, do like one or two minutes of mindfulness meditation before you take your break. And that's going to be helpful at conditioning you so that every time you do a couple minutes of mindfulness meditation, you will, you will start entering into that focus zone. And over the period of sort of two or three weeks of trying to do this, you will start noticing that even just assuming a mindfulness kind of position, you will feel yourself just start to narrow in. It's, it's a very tangible almost feeling where you can just tell that you're becoming less distractible. And it's very empowering to know that you can induce flow state whenever you need to. The third thing is rest work timing and balancing the amount of time you spend working and focusing and the amount of time you spend resting and what you do during those rests. So never work until you feel tired. Only work until you feel like you're not sharp anymore. So when you're at your peak and you're at your optimum, maybe first thing in the morning, whenever you're good, yeah. you're sharp and you're onto things, right? Usually. But usually on a good day. And yeah. then maybe a couple hours later, or maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes later, we start feeling like we're a bit dull. We're having to read things a few more times. Things are not clicking as clearly. As soon as you feel that, that's when you need to take a break. Because that generally means that you're around 50% or so your focus energy. And this is just purely my kind of, my own level of how I calibrate. But I find this works really well for my students is that it's kind of like a slope where 50% is in the middle, your energy levels and focus levels are sort of 50% and above. When you rest, you just tend to drift back to your optimum. So 
when you're optimum, you're kind of burning that focus energy as normal. When you get below 50%, not only are you burning focus energy, you're fighting against the negative impacts of reduced efficiency from being at low energy in the first place. So you're like doubly inefficient. You know, it's, it's sort of telling your brain that like it's okay to work without being focused, which is not good for your classical conditioning. And so what you want to do is detect as soon as you hit 50% and you want to take a break. And it's kind of like, you know, if I hold up, you know, this drink bottle for a really, really long period of time, it doesn't matter how full or how empty it is. If I don't put it down, my arm's going to get sore. It's like saying that I'd rather hold it up for two minutes. As soon as my arm feels tired, take a break for 20 seconds and hold it up for another two minutes rather than hold up for five minutes and need to take a one hour break because my arm's dead. All right, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Okay. So it's about keeping yourself in that optimum 50% for as long as possible yeah. so that you don't enter sort of like a resistance reaction type of focus state where you're just fighting against it. And then that eventually over days and weeks causes burnout. So you need to stay <laughs> maximally optimum. Now, the way you stay optimum is different. Each break is spent differently. So my breaks will be either what I, I separate them out into interleaves versus breaks. Now interleaving is a phenomenon in, in learning where your ability to learn and apply information is dramatically increased when you apply the information in different contexts and different styles. Uh, a sports example would be like if you're playing tennis, don't just practice um, your serve from one angle, practice the ball being thrown up a slightly different angle, practice standing a little bit forward and back from the line that you would normally serve from. So when you take what you want to achieve and then you hit it from different angles and different styles, it dramatically improves your ability to learn it. And it applies for academic learning as well. So an interleaving- Can I get an example for that? Yes, yeah, so an example would be, I'm studying, studying, studying. I've got my mind map. I've been thinking about it a lot. It makes sense in my mind. And now I feel like I'm losing my edge. Okay, I'm gonna take a walk. I'm gonna take a stroll. And as I stroll, I'm just gonna let my brain just think about whatever it wants to think about. And I'm just gonna take it on a tangent through there. <laughs> And I'm going to take a notebook with me and then I'm going to see where are the gaps in my knowledge that I just casually happen to stumble across. And I'm just going to note those gaps down. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good way of consolidating. It doesn't feel fast paced. My brain's getting a break. I get to walk around and enjoy the trees or whatever. And when I come back, I've got a really focused list. Or I'm going to take that and I'm going to seamlessly transition from that into a group study. Or I'm going to quiz my friends. Or I'm going to have a discussion about the stuff that I studied. Or the typical interleaving that happens by accident is you're studying, studying side, you get tired. So you leave the library and you sit out in the lounge area where all the other med students and other students are like hanging out. And you find a friend and you sit next to them and you just chat about random stuff and stuff that you talked about in lectures. And actually that is really effective learning. Usually earlier in the day when you're more focused, interleaving breaks are good because it keeps you in the flow state. It means that your, even your break times are being spent really effectively. And then later in the day, when you feel like you just really need to rest, you take proper breaks. And now proper breaks can be divided into passive relaxation and active relaxation. Active relaxation is when you know that after this break, you need to get back into it. You want to be doing things like dedicated meditation. You want to be doing things that you know are going to wind you down, going for a stroll, things like that. Passive mm -hmm. relaxation is where you just do anything. You don't really care anymore. You're just, you can be on Facebook. You can do whatever you want. Like, it's just, you don't really care about getting back into it at the end of this break. If you do, it's good, but you're not too worried. So this is usually when it's later in the evening or night, you've done some good work throughout the day. You'll see if you can smash out another hour or 30 minutes before you go to sleep, but whatever you need a break right now and you'll see what happens and you just jump on Facebook for like 30 minutes and then you just end up going to sleep after that. And that's fine. So those passive breaks are when you just want a nothing. So mm -hmm. it goes in terms of interleaving and then active breaks, active relaxation, and then passive relaxation. And that's how you organize your breaks. And that keeps you at, near optimum for most of the day and you never really get to a point where you feel like you're burnt out or tired or stressed out from the studying and it keeps things pretty enjoyable as well.